Molly Plastering, providing award-winning plastering and rendering services for over 25 years. I will handle everything from a small repair to a whole commercial building inside and out. Get a free quote day or night and every job gets the smallest touch. Give us a call on 0417 730 926 or visit the website smileysplastering.com.au. There's a couple of uh, wonderful videos on the internet of some of the saves that you've made. Tell us about what you might consider your best save and what you think makes it a really good save. Uh, like I w have always considered my strength to be uh, PCs and in particular drag flicks. So for me that's something that, that I take a lot of pride in uh, doing a lot of work on that and making sure that I'm up to saving them I guess. Um, so for me personally some of my best saves would be against Powman for her drag flicks and mostly because of the reaction that I get when I save it. So for me, it's a personal feeling that I, like I'm just like, well, I've beaten her when I see her reaction. She's quite emotional when she, you know, misses the net or the golly saves it. So for me, some of the best saves that I've made personally are those flicks because it's hurt her so much. So um, yeah, I just, it's something that I've worked on since I was quite young. And even though it's only been brought into the game in the last couple of years, I've always just found it like, it just fascinates me, the drag flick, and, so, and I just think it's great. And some people think it shouldn't be part of the game, but for me, I'd be devastated if it was something that went from the game because that's one of the things that I just truly love about hockey. We can't see your expressions behind the helmet, but do you ever give a, one of those in your face? <laughs> Um, there's a few moments that I want to pull the old uh, sookie moment and when I take the helmet off or I pump the fist but um, no I, I just don't I don't think it's in our culture like Rach is the same we, we don't run around and uh, like pull faces at people or whatever like we get get a little bit competitive at training and we'll set up a scoring system or something and we have a little celebration between ourselves but it's in a game like you know we're just it's our job to save the ball so if we save it then great we have a little celebration on the inside but there, I don't think there's any moments of me having an outrageous celebration <laughs> hopefully not. So as a goalkeeper you've got to be very supple um, I'm amazed the amount of angles that your legs have to get into to make saves so is yeah. there something specific that you go through to do that? Yeah, well, like when I was younger, to be honest, it was a lot about flexibility. And so I remember there was times at the VIS that uh, my old goalkeeping coach, Michelle Flout, she'd just push you into the split position because that was quite popular through that era. And that, yeah, you had to be very, very flexible. Um, yeah, I, was, I, I had to do the splits almost every session. So you had to be able to do the splits for a start and then also not injure anything doing it. But the funny thing is I actually ended up tearing my hamstring in the split position. So it ended up not being so great for me. Uh, but from that, uh, obviously I did all the rehab and got back on track. And then they decided that maybe the splits aren't the best idea because you get stuck down there and you can't get back up as quick. So more now we're leaning towards the strength coming out of that position so you do a full stretch and then you're pulling through that save so it's more strength based work I guess uh, rather than just yeah the stretching and flexibility kind of stuff. Now I guess I'm asking you to give your secrets away but I was talking to Glenn Turner last week um, and he was saying put it past the goalkeeper's foot it's harder for the goalkeeper to, to actually get a foot to the ball than it is to get a hand to the ball. That's actually true yeah um, especially for me I've got quite a long arm span uh, so for me I love personally to stay up tall and make the saves with my hands uh, but I also have long legs as well so you're gonna have to do like quite a bit of work to get it around my legs as well uh, but it's true if you if it's much easier to move your hands you, you're so much quicker on, with your hands than what you are with your legs just because your legs are holding your body weight and you know to lift that weight and shift it into another direction if you're caught a little bit off balance then you've got to lift your whole body weight and shift it the other direction whereas your hands are never really out balanced so you can always move them and adjust them so it's true well done Glenn. Now People seem to not want to roommate with you as a goalkeeper, um, so I'm going to ask you for tips on keeping your goalkeeper's gear clean. Yeah, see, I think there's some keepers out there that are giving us a bad name for that one, and and we, Rachel and I, are on a mission to get rid of that. We want to eliminate that. So we're actually quite clean keepers. Uh, like it helps that we have a lot of gear. Um, so Obo provides us with lots of gear, obviously, but we also like to wash them. So most most tournaments and things like that, we've put it through the bathtub and give it a bit of a scrub. Um, 
and we clean up our gear all the time. So it's generally not too bad, but we also have very good facilities where we, uh, we actually have lockers at the AI ice room where we lock, hang up all our goalie gear and air it out every day. So that helps. Wet goalie gear in the car is a tragedy. Don't ever leave your gear locked up in the car. Uh, always air it out, that helps. Uh, yeah, I just literally just wash it. It's not really that hard. So when you're coming home from a game, you've been sliding around on a wet turf, obviously you've got a Ziploc bag or something in the boot? In my car, I don't often take my gear home. So we just leave it at the pitch. Generally, we leave it at the pitch. If we're on tour or whatever, we generally also leave it at the pitch. So we, uh, when we go away, we arrange a room at the pitch. So we often don't have our gear with us, um, which is a bit scary sometimes because you wonder if you forget things but you know, we generally leave our gear at the pitch. So having established that you're not actually an understudy and that it is a 50-50 situation at the moment, that still means that you sit on the bench for half of your playing career, if yep. you like. So talk us through a day in the life of a substitute goalkeeper who has to go through all of that build up and then doesn't get to go out on the field. Yeah, it's actually interesting now that the game has changed. We tried a new style, which with the 15 minute quarters, um, which I loved personally and Rachel ended up loving as well. We end up playing 15 on, 15 off. Um, and I guess that's just a, you know, a, when, you, when you've got two quality keepers, you can do that and quite similar keepers as well. Um, so Rachel and I have similar styles, so it works out well. If you're in another country where you have two different keepers, probably not gonna work, but there's a bit of a difference in your, um, mental preparation for it like during a game for that if you're playing 15 on 15 off obviously it's quite different if you're not playing at all um, but in terms of our warm-up we're quite good um, in keeping the same structure so Rach and I both love to just warm up the exact same whether you're playing or not so in a lot of other countries if you look up we look up the other end one keeper's off to the side, one's in the main net warming up. So right off the bat, you're warming up differently. You're, you're mentally out of the game. So we like to keep it as every, every single game, we warm up the same warm up and it's the same every day, whether you're playing or not. So we come, one goes in, does the thing, the next one goes in and does the exact same thing. So for us, right off the bat, mentally, you're the same as the other keeper. Um, the only difference is, uh, I guess, you at the end of the warm-up, you sit on the bench and the other one goes on to take the field. But um, during the, uh, the game, obviously, it's different. You're sitting on the bench. And so what I try to do, personally, everyone's different. But if I'm not playing at all, I try to get involved in the team as much as possible. And the, gir the girls, you know, they, they always laugh about it. But, like, I like to do things like fill their drink bottles, do the bibs, do, and I'm just, like, organising things on the bench because that's what makes me feel part of the team. Um, and then, yeah, I just I feel like I've contributed for the day. Uh, and if I'm just sitting there, you know, bored out of my brain, then I'm not. I don't feel like I've been part of that game. Uh, if I if I am sitting on the bench for 15 on, 15 off, I like to not do any of that, and I like to just stand out and call things that I might call when I go onto the pitch. So it's a little bit different in that sense because I'm not, you know, worried about everyone's drink bottles and things like that. I'm more switched on for the game. I still do the calls and things like that if I'm not on the field at all but it's just not a not as huge a priority for me. So I'm more mentally switched on if I have the 15 on, 15 off than what I am for a full game. So scenario, you're filling up drink bottles, all of a sudden out comes the whistle and it's your time to get out there. Does it take a little while to get focused? Are you padded up and ready to go? Yeah, so you have to be, the rules obviously, you have to be fully padded up on the bench. Like all you gotta do is chuck the helmet on and the gloves on and you're technically ready to go. Um, I think we've all been in situations where we've had to do that before and it, it's not ideal, it's not the ideal preparation. Um, even the girls, we've had a few cases recently where we've tried just playing the 16 and uh, the, girl, the girls that are playing number 17 on the bench, they've had injuries and had to jump on and they've said it's hard as well. So the, it's the same as the field play if they haven't played a uh, full game as well but you know it's, it's just another hurdle that you have to jump across you know when you get to that point so I, I think it's it, it definitely is tricky but it's not impossible so you're a very fit person if you've sat on the bench for the entire game how do you then feel when you go home afterwards you, you haven't really burnt off all of that adrenaline yeah yeah it's quite tough um we kind of work it in that you can do gym whenever you want and things like that if you're not playing um so if you're the goalkeeper that hasn't played, even sometimes the goalie that does play, because games are a lot less than training, uh, we try to do a lot more gym sessions and some running sessions than the other girls. 
Um, so it just really depends on the tournament and what kind of structure you have. But um, yeah, sometimes there are, there are a lot of rest days and you can use those rest days to top up your sessions because obviously we can't lose our peak performance and so we have to keep ticking over. Uh, but mostly for goalkeepers, it's, it's in the gym work and it's sprint sessions and things like that. We don't do a lot of running and, and that kind of stuff. So we don't have to worry about going for a 10K run if we miss a game. It's just, it's more we go to the gym and we'll, we will knock out a session there. As a goalkeeper, are you allowed to come out on the field if there is a necessity for a substitute? Oh, look, um, I, we had this opportunity in uh, New Zealand. Half our team got sick and we were running very, very low on players. And we were playing, I think we were playing Samoa or a team like that. And we were already up a lot of goals. And I was just waiting for that opportunity because I was the one on the bench. I was waiting for the opportunity to get called up, but uh, Como just didn't, didn't let it happen. I don't think he's very keen on that. I have seen a um, goalkeeper come out in a tournament and play uh, due to like too many injuries on the field players, but um, and she ended up scoring a goal actually. But you know, it, it rarely would happen internationally, I would think. But sounds like you'd be ready my for it. Fingers crossed. <laughs>